JB. <laughs> Hi, JB. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm fine. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. So, like, uh, a few things. I heard you said about Obama and about um, how the it became more racist during his administration. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? I think you said that um, race relations went down when Correct. Uh, what, during the prompt. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? How, how, how did it go down? Like, um, well, we had the creation of Black Lives Matter under the Obama administration, which we never had before. We had the media constantly pushing um, the narrative that it's only that the police are only targeting one group of people, which is untrue, and so on. Okay, how much how much black history do you know about history in America? Like about black folks in America and how much violence they had to undergo um, while living in America? How much history? I know quite a bit of, of black history. I like I said I. I've read Thomas Sowell's books. I there's is there something in particular that you want me to know? No, nah, because I guess for me it's like when you're talking about <clears throat> the plight of another culture, um, I think trying to understand it from the perspective on the outside looking in mm -hmm. is gonna be very difficult because this is something that we live on a day-to-day -day basis. Like mm -hmm. there's all mm -hmm. types of stuff coming at you. Um, in media, you have to like contend with your environment mm -hmm. um, and things of that nature. Um, these things sit in the back of a lot of black people's minds. And I guess they hear you say like certain things like, um, like we have a black mayor and then there's violence, but this is something that's been in effect for quite some time. And then this historical, uh, discrimination has played major role in to why you see the things you see here today, um, systemic racism, redlining, um, police brutality, um, uh, unfair housing, racist housing. Um, and, and well, uh, JB, just really quickly, um, I, I get what you're trying to say. You're trying to say, like, I guess I'm unable to. Un no, no, hold on. I'm back. Is that pizza? No, it's just a book I think you should check out. It's called <laughs> The Color of Law. Okay, so I wanted to speak to you on that. Okay, you're basically saying that I can't understand human concepts because I'm because my skin isn't dark, or no. that I'm not a black person. But I wanted to tell you, I live in America. I'm only speaking on the things that we see currently. And as for redlining, it was made illegal a long time ago, and people are still arguing that even though it is illegal, that it's still happening, even if. I'll give it to you like this. But, but redlining. One minute, one minute, JB. Let me let me tell you something just really quickly. Okay. I want to tell you this. When you see, I don't know, maybe Asians, when they come to this country, a lot of them live in not the best neighborhoods. But they, because of because of certain mentality, they tend to make their neighborhoods better than what they were. They come and they make neighborhoods better. Have you ever seen a bad neighborhood and you see uh I don't know, maybe you can say whites and Asians start moving in, they make it better because they clean it up, they build up. When you have a neighborhood, it doesn't have to be bad if you don't let it be bad. You and your neighborhood, you and your community can fix those things. We yeah, all can the fix. Thing is, the thing is, you can do what you want in your neighborhood, but when you don't control the politics, you don't control where that money gets routed. For instance, for example, um, like uh, public school. Public school is funded by property taxes. So if you live in an area with a lot of apartments or the average income is very low, um, your school is going to get less money and less resources, and you're going to be less educated. And you're not going to be educated the same way as a person who lives in a neighborhood that has a higher income. So what resource do you think, what, what do you think that certain communities aren't getting because they have less money? Oh, they're not getting uh, good teachers, um, up-to-date equipment, um, up-to-date books, um, like things like coding, uh, technology, uh, things that are important for kids to learn so they can be competitive in the future. They're not getting that. Like me, like I learned coding at the age of 20, 27. Imagine if I would have learned it as a kid. Like this is something that should be introduced to black kids, young black males, 
because do you know do you know that there's um there are especially in new york so i only know about new york and in new york there are schools that are in bad neighborhoods that get more funding than a lot of the uh of the other schools that are in better neighborhoods they even get more funding because they get the free lunch services they get all of these things that taxpayers no, are throwing into it no, no. when you talk about people not having enough resources one minute right. be, one minute so you're talking about people not having a, a good teacher or not having technology. When you have uh, people coming from even China, people in China, they are sitting on dirt floors and they're still learning whatever needs to be learned. Some, right. you, to say that we need to have the best of technology in order to learn is, I mean, it's a luxury, it's yes, a but it's not necessary it's not for that. you to it's, learn. It's not just that, it's, it's one piece. So. You go to a school that's crappy, go to a school, teacher may not care. On top of that, you may live in an environment where it's violent. There's gangs. You have to contend with that. Well, you were talking about schools, but you're changing the subject to gangs. Well, it's not the subject because you got to understand it's not just one piece. It's a multitude of things. You can't mm -hmm. just, you can't understand white supremacy or the system and just say, okay, this piece, well, you have this, that, and the third. And so what's wrong with you? Why are you not making it? It's, it's not that simple. You know, you have to you operate within a system. So when I was talking about redlining, so redlining, like a lot of neighborhoods in the past, like in the 50s, 60s, were called red zones. And a lot of these places couldn't get. I know what I know what red zones are. I wanted to point so, out something. Hold on, hold on. So if you understand these things, understand how black folks have been marginalized in this country. And time and time again, there's so many examples showing you black folks trying to have economic power, economic growth, and then you would have the system find some way to take it from them. And um, you're not understanding how politics plays a role and how the culture that you come from, you guys play politics. Well, that, politics plays oh, a huge oh, role. Oh, JB, oh, JB oh. I have to be able to speak. You can't just have a monologue here. Yeah. Let me let me just address something. When you talk about politics, I agree. Politics does play a, a huge role. But when you have people, let me ask you this. Do you believe in school choice? Do you believe that parents should be able to choose where their where their kids go? Absolutely. I believe in school choice as well. That's something that was pushed by Trump, but the Democrats refused it. They said that wherever you live, you must go to the school that's in your uh, zip code or something like that, some your area, your community. I believe in certain things. If you want to talk about politics, we have people voting for the same. One minute, one minute. We have people voting for the same people that give them nothing. These Democratic policies have brought these neighborhoods down, and people still keep voting for them. Votes don't mean nothing. You need money. You can't just go vote. That's step two. Step one, you have to get money. <laughs> okay. When you get money, then you can go to a politician and say, okay, this is my agenda. Mm. I need this law. I need this business provision. And I need this protection around you. Mm. Well, usually that's where oh, we have the men in the family oh, usually do that. They usually protect the children and keep oh, the children on. out of gangs. Hold on, hold on. Let me speak. The culture you come from, you guys do that. You guys pull your money together, pull your resources together, and petition the government for resources. Um, but for us, a group like Black folks in America, you need wealth in order to like push forward. If you don't have wealth, you're not going to get no agenda. <laughs> you're going to be able to get pushed out of your neighborhood, and you're not going to be able to do nothing about it because this politics is at play. These things have been planned. They're precise. And this is just how they roll. And unfortunately, a lot of black people get rolled up under it because they don't really understand what's going on. It's just gentrification. Some do, but a lot don't. And okay. they see there's something going on and there's something wrong. And the only thing they're missing is education. Like for mm -hmm. me, I'm an atheist. I'm an independent. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. Republicans okay. are not defenders of capitalism at all. They vote okay. for expansion of government on both sides of the aisle. So I don't trust neither one. So I'm an independent, mm -hmm. I'm an atheist. I've studied economics, I understand now. I used to be a Democrat, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm educated and informed, then you can make better decisions. But a lot of right. people I, I do agree, JB, we should all come together and make things better. I agree. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate your viewpoint. All right, thank you. Thank you.